Courtney, welcome back to my channel. And if you are new here, I ate meat only for an entire year. And I'm gonna tell you how I feel. Much to everyone's shock, I don't have heart disease. My arteries didn't clog. I don't have gout. I don't have scurvy. I don't have high blood pressure. In fact, I've never felt better and I have optimal health. So how did I get started on this journey? Well, thank you for asking. I found carnivore through Dr. Paul Saladino, carnivore MD, um, on TikTok. My husband was sending me his TikToks for about a month and we never talked about it. I would just watch them and think that he was kind of crazy. And then one day I'm like, should we not be eating vegetables? Like, why are you sending me these TikToks? He's like, I don't know, I gotta look into it. So that was the beginning of the rabbit hole and diving into everything and realize how we have been lied to about nutrition. They can't make money off of us if we are healthy. They want us sick and they got a prescription for us to fix it. Anywho, I did start off my carnivore diet as animal-based. I came from a low-carb keto place. I was on and off for about six to seven years. And when I found animal-based, I actually was coming off of a four-month binge because I got caught up in the anti-diet culture bullshit. And I thought me, as a carbon sugar addict, could moderate my intake of croissants. And that didn't work. I've learned now that I am an abstainer and I'm not a moderator. So I started off as animal-based, not ever thinking that I would go strict carnivore. I think my little sugar addicted brain was so happy to keep in those fruits and the sugars. Now, since I was coming from a keto place in years prior, I was paying attention to my carbs. So while I wasn't in ketosis, I was still what they would consider low carb. I was probably around 50, maybe 75 carbs a day, mostly meat, a little bit of avocado, a cup of berries or so, and a little bit of maple syrup on my burgers. And I quickly realized after five weeks that it wasn't working for me. Even though my belly was full, I was satiated. Having that sugar made me want more. So even though I was full, my mouth would want more blueberries and some more syrup. So I quickly realized that, realized that I needed to stop that. Some of the benefits that I've seen are weight loss. I'm down 45 pounds. I still have probably like 15 to 20 to go. And mind you, I haven't really been exercising. Um, <laughs> so all that happened with not too much movement. Not proud of that. I'm trying to be better about it. I'm on two weeks solid of working out, so look out. Also, I've had horrible skin all my life. I do still have some pimples here and there, but it has cleared up drastically. And people do say it looks like I'm aging eating this way. I do have wrinkles, I'm almost 40, and I do have under eye wrinkles, but now, you know, the fat isn't filling all those out. So you do see my wrinkles a little bit more, but in the whole big scheme of things, my skin has definitely improved from what it was before. My tummy is awesome. My digestion is great. I'm not having gas or bloating because I'm not having all those gut irritating fibers. And two of the most surprising benefits I've had are food freedom and my mental health. And let's talk about that because <laughs> some people are like, how the hell do you have food freedom because you're not eating anything? In fact, I get told a lot that I have an eating disorder. Back when I was eating carbs and sugar, whether it was during my four month binge or it was when I was low carb or keto, I was always thinking about food. I was obsessed with food. The keto treats, I would just think about them all the time. And now that I've removed anything sweet from my diet, I just don't have the, I don't have the craving for it. You could have, I say this all the time, you'd have a plate of donuts right next to me and I would have zero desire to eat them. I just, they're not a part of my life. I don't want them, my body doesn't want them. I just feel good without it. So to not be obsessing over trying not to binge or binging and then restricting myself the next day or trying to fit donuts in my macros, like it's just, I don't even give it another thought. And that's food freedom to me because the mental gymnastics I would go through was exhausting. So to just mentally be free in that way has just been life-changing. And my mental health. I was on Zoloft when I first started eating this way and no one asked me what my diet was like. You know, it's almost like they don't want you to think or know that you can heal yourself with food and that it really comes into play with your mental health. You know, they say, you know, depression is linked to inflammation in the brain. And if you're eating inflammatory foods, then that's going to affect that. I was struggling there for a few years. I was in a deep, dark place and I had, I think I was at whatever, a hundred milligrams or whatever the thing is, but it was a hundred of Zoloft and it just numbed me out. So I did slowly with my doctor, you know, wean off 
towards 25 I was at. So it wasn't perfect at all. I still wasn't feeling great. So that is how I noticed a change in my mood while I was still medicated while I started eating a carnivore diet because it wasn't helping me quite enough. And I could tell like, oh my gosh, I'm actually like starting to feel better. Like what the heck? I didn't even think, I didn't go into carnivore thinking that this would do anything for my mental health. I just, I just thought it was just what our brains did. I had no idea by putting diesel in a car that doesn't take diesel, <laughs> you know, that whole like analogy. I never thought that I would have my mental health back. The food freedom and the mental health, I think those are my two favorite because they're not to be expected. Everyone goes into this, you know, knowing that it could help with their autoimmune or that they're wanting to lose weight. No clue that these would be the benefits. So I wanna make sure everybody knows that this is possible. So somebody asked me recently what my doctor thinks of this and he doesn't know that I'm carnivore, but I did say when I was getting my cholesterol done that I eat a lot of red meat. And his response was, oh, in my opinion, I don't think we are designed to eat red meat. I haven't eaten red meat in 40 years because it causes colon cancer. And I think we're designed to eat, I think he said fish and turkey stands out in my mind, but maybe he said chicken. I definitely think he's wrong. <laughs> and you know, most doctors even admit they are not trained in nutrition. They get like a handful of hours in nutrition. They are taught to diagnose an issue and then treat that with a drug. They're not getting to the root of the issue. And as far as the cholesterol topic, I do need to get some updated labs. Um, I do have my lab work done from six month at the six month mark. It's up here on YouTube. Um, people that don't understand cholesterol think it's high, but a few of the things you wanna look at is like the triglycerides are important and the HDL, which is the, the good cholesterol and the particle size and the ratio, like there's so many things that come into play. It's more than just the total number. So if you wanna learn more, um, I hopefully I will remember to link this video um, as we go over the lab results because my friend Sarah from In The Buff Wellness, she goes over it and there's more information in the caption. And also, I mean, all the carnivore doctors are out there talking about it too. I haven't read it yet, but the great cholesterol myth is supposed to be great. And Dr. Ovedia, he's a heart surgeon. He recommends carnivore diet as well. He eats this way himself. And so he has an awesome book, Stay Off My Operating Table. And he also touches on cholesterol numbers in that as well. So I won't even get into that because it's not my wheelhouse, but just know that it's, it's more than what we've been told. And I heard they even like lowered the numbers on what's considered normal. And that's to sell you all statins. As far as clogged arteries, eating this way is not going to clog your arteries. It's actually the carbs and the sugar that cause the damage and your cholesterol that's just flowing through your veins just happens to be there. So I love this analogy that I heard, like when you show up to a house fire and you see the house is on fire and the firemen are there, do you immediately think, oh my gosh, the firemen started this fire? No, they just happen to be there. So think of a burning house as your veins. <laughs> Think of the cholesterol as the firemen. You know, the firemen didn't start the fire. They just happened to be there. Eating this way has changed my life. And I want to shout it from the rooftops because I want everybody to know that this is an option if you're not feeling great. It goes against everything we've been told. So a lot of people are not ready to hear this information. They are not accepting of what we have to say, what I have to say. I get a lot of hate on social media, hundreds of comments a day. I've had news articles written about me. Like, it's just so funny how eating a proper human diet seems to be newsworthy. And besides getting my health back, the other awesome thing about eating this way has been the community. Oh my gosh, I, I have lifelong best friends now <laughs> that I've never even met in person from Instagram, YouTube, you know, it's just been so amazing. And, you know, we're all just going against the grain. So we kind of, you know, people <laughs> want to call it a cult, but you know, we're just passionate about what we're doing. We've all come from a place where we're trying to fix something. So we're excited that we fixed it by eating this way. So, you know, it's just such an amazing and loving community and I'm stoked to be a part of it. If you are having any sort of health issue, if you're tired, if you're overweight, if you know, this, this and that, if you have it and you're curious, give this a shot minimum 30 days. I would even say 90 days is like the miracle point. I feel like you'd really get, 
you know, a full feel for what's going on and reach out to me if you need any help. Slide into my DMs on Instagram. I also have a private community where it's group coaching slash accountability. I'm in there checking on everyone every day. I need the accountability myself for working out. Um, I have an ebook all about how to get started. I have videos here on YouTube. They're organized into a playlist so you can see how to get started that way. And I just wanna leave you with eat meat and question everything.